Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, talking Washington. Uh, before we continue our conversation with Chris Fetters, want to let you know that uh, if you'd like to throw a few bucks at the games, you can do, do so by getting actually not the 50% that you see on the screen added to your account, but 100%. Double your money if you go to the link in the description section below. And the good thing about this is that it goes to a good cause as well as all the other typical fees. You got uh, the hashtag Sam Strong. You grab to the link right next to that. It's a joint venture with a number of us on YouTube. Our uh, volunteer roadshow, who's heading this up because of his son's battle with cancer. Uh, St. Jude's Hospital and betnow.eu. Throw some money in that account. Get yourself ready to bet on some football games and get double the money. You throw in 100 bucks, they give you 100. That's the deal right now. Uh, if you use the promo code and the link down below, MRTVCFB, MRTVCFB uh, for betnow.eu. The three top receivers, Chris, are back. Uh, so there's productivity back at wide receiver. But is there really a, an, an elite guy like we've seen with uh, uh, or a near elite type wide receiver on this roster? Are those type of playmakers? It, it doesn't appear to be from the outside. Yeah, are, are you know you're asking is there another John Ross or is there another yeah. Dante Pettis that kind those of those two guys come to mind probably yeah. yeah probably not although Aaron Fuller um, caught you know basically around 850 yards he was an All Pac 12 pick um, you know it, 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 there was there was definitely some guys there that really started to emerge at the end of the season Andre Bocelli I thought really showed himself up the last few games of the year Ty Jones was starting to get more and more consistent he's that bigger receiver at 6'4", about 2'10", 2'12", and then um, obviously getting Hunter Bryant back. You know, he played at the end of last year after getting hurt for much of the year, um, played the last five games, played in the uh, Rose Bowl, had a few spectacular catches, especially in that in that fourth quarter there to help them get downfield and score some points. So they have guys. And, and again, I mentioned Puka Nakua, the true freshman. I'm You know, there's also redshirt freshman guys like uh, Trey Lowe, um, Marcus Spiker, Austin Osborne are all guys that I think could be in the mix. Terrell Bynum is definitely a guy that could be in the mix. And then bringing Chico McClatcher back is huge. He took a bit of a leave of absence last year, had to deal with a family matter, which was really serious. And then he's come back, and Mark, he, he looks as good as he did a couple years ago. And we're talking about a guy that you, you give the ball to him in some space and let him go. And, and he's... Uh, He's a guy that I remember when I saw him, even before he went into ninth grade at Federal Way High School, was running sub 4 440s. So he's got the quickness and space, but he's also got the moves in the box where he can get free and do some damage, and he's built you know, really like a running back. He's about 5'8", 180, 185. So between him and Trey Lowe, I think they've kind of got that, they've got that nickel spot, that, uh, that slot spot uh, figured out. And then, uh, again, they've got a, just a handful of seniors in terms of Fuller and Pacelli. Quentin Pounds is back from his knee injury again, third knee injury in, in three years. Uh, remarkable story there in its own right. And then, again, you've got the younger guys like Ty Jones, Jordan Chin, Terrell Bynum, the, the redshirt freshman that, that all redshirted last year, and then the true freshman like Puka Kua, Taj Davis. Um, they are definitely not wanting for lack of talent, but you're right. They need an elite guy, uh, a couple of elite guys to really step up and make a difference. 247 Sports, always the go-to for college uh, football fans. On the Washington side, that's a dog man. So go to Dogman at 247 Sports. Check out Chris's work right there covering the Huskies as they attempt to win another Pac-12 championship. Uh, Chris, of course, Stanford's always going to take pride in its offensive line. Oregon fans are going to say that this year that they've got the best offensive line maybe in the country, and Washington's going to say the same. Uh, it's quite a group that you've got up front uh, that's going to lead the way. They are all back, which is great. And there's a, I think they, they did a count this morning. I think they have about 106 starts between the five of them. When you look at Trey Adams coming back at left tackle, you got Jared Hilbers who replaced him at left tackle last year, has now moved over to right tackle to replace Caleb McGarry, who was a first-round draft pick to the Falcons. And then uh, at the guards, you've got Luke Wattenberg, a, a junior who was a starter, a full-time starter last year. And then at right guard, you've got a full-time starter in Jackson Kirkland, a Washington legacy, who played all 14 games as a redshirt freshman last year, started. And then you've got Nick Harris in the center, who's going to be a fourth-year starter uh, along the offensive line, um, second-year starter, obviously, at center. 
So you've got all those guys coming back. The real key here is trying to figure out what their depth's going to be because you only have one guy with starts after that. That would be Henry Roberts, the fifth year uh, offensive lineman who com- who's actually been taking some snaps at center, uh, as well as uh, redshirt freshman left tackle Mateo Mele. They are kind of the backup centers right now behind Nick Harris until Cole Norgard gets uh, gets healthy. He hasn't really been available much for fall camp. He's been one of the guys that kind of went down before the fall, and so we're not sure what his timetable is to return. So I think that's the real storyline for this group, Mark, is just the idea of the first five set, and it's been set since spring, and it's been kind of an easy call. It's just who are going to be those guys behind him because there's a, there's a lot of talent, plenty of guys there. Um, like I said, you got Henry Roberts, you got Mattel Mele, you've got uh, Vic Kern at right guard, you've got uh, Henry Bainavalu at one of the tackles, you got MJ Ale, who's a 355 pound uh, left guard. You've got all sorts of guys that are that are uh, potential game changers on that offensive line. They just haven't been there and they haven't done it yet. So until they show that they've uh, got what it takes and get the game experience and the turns. We just kind of don't know what's behind Washington. So if they do have an injury or two that pop up on that offensive line, it's going to be interesting to see how the, the guys behind uh, behind those guys react. Chris, we talked to uh, Jacob Eason, but more from the standpoint of his selection as starting quarterback and why it took so long and why it's still not announced uh, as of this taping. By the time we release it, it may be out on the streets officially. Uh, but in regards to his play on the field, uh, an elite talent, but didn't play like an elite player. And that's understandable. His first year at Georgia, just uh, getting his feet wet, getting experience. And now he's two years, three years removed from that. Uh, is it just assumed that he's going to be one of the best quarterbacks in the conference? Or is there is there some uncertainty there? You know, what are we getting? Well, I mean, you know, you, if you talk about the the conference as a whole, Mark, I mean, you've got Justin Herbert at Oregon, you've got Khalil Tate at, at Arizona, who's a real wild card. Everyone thought he was going to explode last year after finishing the year before on such a high note, and we're not exactly sure what's going to happen with those guys. You got JT Daniels at USC, who was just named uh, Dorian Thompson Robinson at UCLA, finished strong, and he's probably poised for a, for a big year at UCLA. Um, so you've got some guys. I mean, Steven, even Steven Montez at Colorado could could surprise some people too. Tyler Huntley at Utah certainly is a guy that can uh, do some damage both with the with his arm and with his feet. So you've got a number of guys. I mean, it, and it's interesting. Um, Daniels is, uh, is one of the kids at Arizona State just got non uh, named by Herm Edwards, and he's a true freshman. So we're not exactly sure what's going to happen with those guys too. So there's so many guys that uh, that could be the top quarterback per se in the Pac-12, and I think Jacob Easton certainly could hold claim to to that as well. I mean, he certainly has as, as, uh, as much of an opportunity to, and he certainly has as much of a pedigree, considering all the guys, except for maybe Herbert, um, don't really have a, a great resume. I mean, they all have uh, potential, but potential, no, we, we know what that means. That means he hasn't done anything yet. So, um, again, you're right. Freshman was a bit of a mix, a bit, bit of hot and cold. When he was at Georgia, I mean, everyone remembers that that finish at Tennessee that looked like it was going to go their way until Tennessee scores in the final play of the game. So, um, you know, he's had some moments on those big stages in the SEC. So I think that's what gives Washington fans confidence that he can come in the Pac-12 and, and do some good things. And again, he has all the physical intangibles. He's 6'6", 230, can throw the football through a phone book. Um, he, you know, he's basically the anti-Jake Browning when it comes to the physical part of the game. but can he be just like Jake Browning when it comes to the mental side, when it comes to actually being like another coach out there on the field and, and running the playbook and just understanding it like the back of his hand? Those are the things that we just don't know about. And you're right. It's been three years since that freshman year. It's been two years since he's really stepped on the field in a competitive game. So is there, you know, quote unquote, is there some ring rust or is there some things that he's got to sort out to get, comfortable with the speed of the game and all those kinds of things. Sure. I mean, there's no doubt that this game against Eastern Washington will be a great litmus test for him going forward, not because it's going to be some great benchmark for how he's going to respond against the Pac-12, for instance, because they played Cal the following week. That's going to be a huge test. Cal's defense is looking really, really good, especially their secondary. Second, Their secondary, they're going to claim they're probably the best in the Pac-12 right now, and I think obviously Washington's going to have something to say about that. 
But Cal's defense is really strong. And, you know, Justin Wilcox comes from the Chris Peterson school and the Pete Kwiatkowski school. So um, th there's a lot of similarities there. So right now, Jacob Easton's got to show that he's ready to go and, and, and he doesn't lack for confidence. He doesn't lack for experience on the big stages. And now he's just got to go out and do it. He's going to get his opportunity. Hopefully he makes the best of it. Yeah, fans get enamored by the recruiting rankings and by the high ceiling and by the skill set that's an NFL potential. Uh, but they may find that they appreciate Jake Browning a little bit more but during certain spots of 2019. We shall see. Uh, obviously, Jacob Eason, obviously, if he can fill out uh, the experience portion of it and the mental aspect of it, then he's got all the tools to be much better than Jake Browning. But uh, those other intangibles are sometimes undervalued.